for your exemption. Lift your hands, everybody. Now in the authority of the name of Jesus, and by all the forces that back up this commission, because God's servant received this instruction for all of us, anyone marked for destruction, that mark is erased right now. Now hear this, anyone in our midst marked for death, that mark is erased right now. Anyone in our midst marked for stagnation, that mark is erased right now. Anyone in our midst marked for frustration, that mark is erased right now. In the name of Jesus. Any one of us marked for any form of sickness or disease, under the sound of my voice in this service, that mark is erased right now. What did God say for this service? This is my most excited time. He said, you will teach on the mark of exemption. What mark is it? One mark will leave, another mark will come. And the mark coming upon you is touch not. Now please hear this. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, anyone that attacks your life again after today, my God will bury them. Anyone that tries to frustrate your destiny by any form of demonic influence, my God will bring them low. Anyone that has vowed that whatever is happening in the world must happen to you, my God will reverse it upon them. Now, everybody stand on your feet, pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. The glory is here, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Lord, I desire that mark of exemption. Lift your voice, 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 lift your voice. Rakataka da 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 da. Yekote kedesh. We didn't come to play today. We came to receive the mark of exemption. The mark of exemption. The mark of exemption. The mark of exemption. Yes, it is a mark of exemption coming upon you. The mark of exemption, the mark of exemption, the mark of exemption, the mark of exemption, the mark of exemption. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what God is saying to us today? After today, be conscious that there is a mark, a mark that is visible. Can I tell you this? We will not bury any member of this church before their time. None of us will have to go to any house to console anybody. By this mark of exemption, you are exempted from all evils. You are exempted from all evils. You are exempted from all evils. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seat. This kind of service is strange. Please hear this and hear it well. By covenant, we are not permitted to suffer what the world around us suffers. We are not the same. While you may console them, you are not to be consoled. By covenant, we are not permitted. Somebody shout with me, I'm not permitted. Please shout it louder again. I'm not permitted. We are not permitted to suffer what the world around us suffers. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, 17, 18, Malachi 4, 1 to 3. I'll just summarize. He said, I will distinguish. I will separate. God knows how to separate his own from those that are not his. You can't serve the almighty and come under the mighty torments of the devil. We are not the same. You need a consciousness of your difference. Hear this. You may console others. Nobody, sinners shouldn't be consoling us. We are not permitted. He said the day is coming that we're born like an oval. I will humble you now. Please hear this. We can't pray divine agenda away. 
He said, in the last days, perilous, terrible times shall come. We are just at the surface. Oh Lord, evil must not happen in the world. It's a wasted prayer. The Bible has said it that it will come. There will be wars. Rumors of, can I just humble you? I don't talk like this usually. How many years has Syria been fighting? It's over a decade. Over a decade. Over a decade. Still fighting. Many more nations will enter into that realm. It's the Bible. It's not what are you saying. Have you not read the book? Those are signs of the end time. Now, in Isaiah 60, it says something. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover where? If your country is in the air, darkness is there. And gross darkness, the people. But anywhere you see evil and but follows, it means there is some group of people who don't partake of what was said earlier. On. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory. Now, the, the whole darkness shall cover the earth. You are not the earth. Gross darkness, the people. You are not the people, you are a person. But the Lord shall arise upon you. This mark needs to come on us as individuals. Not as a church, but in the Lord shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. In the midst of that crisis, who are these that are still flying like the cloud? People on the ground, others are flying. Now, in the midst of this crisis, a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. So relax. There is a but. Regardless of what is happening, there is a but. And that but talks about exemption. Lift your hands. No matter the evil you see around, it won't touch you. It won't touch your family. <laughs> I'll read Ezekiel 9. It will, it will put us in shape. But let me just first read verse 6. There's a point I'm coming. I will read it properly. Slay utterly old and young. <laughs> Both maids and little children. This is big stuff. And women. But... Anywhere you see but, position yourself after what was said. But come not near. Ay, 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 He didn't say don't touch. He said don't come near. Yes. Come not near. Any man or woman or child or boy or girl upon whom is the mark. That's where that topic is coming from. The mark of exemption. But look at this that should position us with fear. Begin at my sanctuary. <laughs> Don't begin on the streets. Clean the church first. Then they began at the ancient men. These men have been long in the sanctuary. If I'm preaching something not in the Bible, you should be able to say it's not the Bible. You are reading it. Which were before the house. Galatians 6, 17. From henceforth. Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel to Galatians. Case close. Once there is a mark, the mark is visible to the slayer of blood. The mark is visible to the troubles of the world. 
the mark is visible to all enemies of your destiny. Now in the name of Jesus, may that mark come upon you and your family today. I didn't hear loud, amen. amen. Some years ago, I did a teaching on the 10 plagues of Egypt. I can't go through that now. We we'll just touch on five, but the 10 plagues and what those plagues represent, 10 of them, because those plagues are still real today. Let's just pick a few. For example, the swarm of flies. That connotes decadence and stench. Exodus chapter 8, verse 20 to 24. The death of cattle implies collapse of businesses and careers. Exodus 9, 1 to 7. Hails and tempests mingled with fire connotes devastation and destruction. Exodus 9, 18 to 26. Gross darkness. The first gross darkness recorded was not the one in Isaiah. It was in Exodus. Gross darkness covered the whole Egypt. That connotes frustration, stagnation, and despair. Can't you see how many people in the world today are frustrated? It's not that we are better than them. Some of us just understand that there's a mark. It does not allow us to go through what they go through. You find that in Exodus 10, 21 to 23. What more? The plague of sudden death. That one means sudden death. Exodus 11, 4 to 7. Exodus 12, 29 to 31. <laughs> Please hear this in case you wish you were living in a generation before now. There are some people like that. Who I wish I was living in the day of Moses or Isaiah. It's the same thing. We understand from scriptures that farming is synonymous with every generation. How many generations? Every generation in history. Abraham, famine. Isaac, famine. Jacob, famine. Joseph, famine. Yet they were all exempted. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9. You know that? Verse 9, please. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9. The thing that had been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is what? No new thing under the sun. We also understand from scriptures that somehow, somehow, covenant people flourish in hard times. Genesis 47, <clears throat> Genesis 47, 15 to 27. They just have a way of flourishing in hard times. <clears throat> Now, what qualifies us for this mark of exemption? With all we have received and what I've learned over the years, I discovered 12 qualifiers. We take six, six in each side. You may not hear this elsewhere, so fasten your seatbelt. Number one qualifier for this mark of exemption, follow very carefully, is hate evil. Hate evil. Hate evil. Evil. I didn't say be born again. I said hate evil. Now, let's read that Ezekiel 9, 1 to 11. Just fasten your seatbelt. Ezekiel chapter 9. Praise God. Are you ready for this word? Are you sure? Hate evil. No matter how many people say evil is okay, I won't join them. Because where me and you are going may be different. I didn't come with you. I won't live with you. So do your own. Some people say shine your shine. I shine my own. If you like, be playing with evil. Don't say I didn't tell you. 
Acts, Ezekiel 9. Please, I would prefer you open your Bible so the screen doesn't confuse you. Now he said, he cried also in my ears. This is a very tearful thing. With a loud voice saying, cause them that have come over this city to draw near. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lied towards the north. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the basin altar. Verse 3. And the glory of the Lord God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink on by his side. Verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set what? A mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry. They don't like the abominations that be done in the midst. Look at that. Those are the ones who qualify for the mark. The ones who cry and sigh, Oh Lord, what is this? And to the others he said in my hearing, Go after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare. Neither have ye pity. This is the Bible. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and the little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom this person with linen has marked. Follow the mark. Let the mark lead you. Don't let sympathy lead you. Any service like this of exemption, you can't tell what the enemy has planned after it. You just need to ensure no matter who you are, that mark lives here with you. Now, begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, defy the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. Verse 8, and it came to pass while they were slaying them and I was left. I fell upon my face and cried and said, ah, Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then he answered and said unto me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the earth. The Lord seeth not. And as for me also, my eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen that had the ink on on his side reported the matter saying, I have done. Thou has commanded me. It's not enough to be in church. But you must hate evil. To hate evil simply means to fear God. Proverbs 8 verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You cannot join them and be separated from them. Don't explain evil. Rather, expose it. If the destruction will begin from the sanctuary, then this instruction is for the church. What makes evil is the act, not the actor. If a believer commits evil, it is still evil. 
If a sinner commits evil, it is still evil. So it's not the actor involved. It is the act. Number two, have a revelation of your exemption right. After you hate evil, have a revelation of your exemption right. Acts chapter 7 and verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. With the angel who spoke to him in the Mount Sinai. With thy fathers who received the lively oracles to give to us. And we know that that church was exempted. So we need a revelation in today's church of our exemption right in Christ. Here it is. Darkness cannot mess around light and claim ignorance. When the revelation of your exemption dawns, it leads to your elevation above the darkness of this age. So you need a personal revelation of your exemption. That it happens around Maryland doesn't mean it should happen. We are different. Maryland is a place. I'm a person. Number three, because of our time, walk in the light of the above reality. The reality of number two, walk in the light of it. Don't just have a revelation. Walk in the light of the revelation you have found. And one way you walk in the light is by declaration. If you've truly found it, then say it. It cannot happen to me. I cannot be killed anyhow. Praise God. You know, in this part of the world, sickness is celebrated. I, are you aware? One day I went with somebody to the hospital to pray. I said, this place looks like a hotel. Maybe it's long you have been to other parts of the world. Hospital, nobody likes to go. But this one, everything looks beautiful. You don't know. Don't think it is normal. We are exempted from those diseases. I taught them one time in the healing school, the Bible talks about the evil diseases of Egypt. I'm not an Egyptian. I'm an Israelite. So cancer is Egyptian. HIV, Egyptian. That, those are not things that should come around us. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, anyone under the sound of my voice, under any plague of hell, I decree that you are free. Amen. Shout a louder amen if you are there. Amen. Walk in the light of the above reality. John 8 and verse 12. John 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I'm the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John chapter 12, 36, 35, 36. John 12, 35, and verse 36. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. Somebody shout, God forbid. God forbid. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be children of light. This thing spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Somebody shout, I will walk in the light. I will walk in the light. Now, number what? Number four. Number four, engage the covenant of seed, time, and harvest. Listen. If trouble will not find you, don't cause trouble for others. When it is in your power to have a man or woman exempted, exempt them because you are sowing a seed. Have you noticed those that plot to have people fired from work, they also get fired? Okay. What controls this world is seed time and harvest. You pull somebody down to go up, somebody will need to pull you down to also go up. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. You also see the importance of that in Malachi 3, 6 to 18. 
And Malachi 4, 1 to 4. Now, number five, please. Be obedient to instructions. If you want exemption, be obedient to instructions. Never use experience every new day. Use instruction every new day. Listen and listen well. Genesis 26, verse 1 to 5. If Isaac was to follow the exact footstep of Abraham, he would have finished himself. Genesis 26, verse 1 to 5. God said, don't go down to Egypt. I know you have an example of your father that went to Egypt. But don't go down. And the Lord appeared unto him, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So John in this land and I will be with thee. Will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed multiply as the stars of heaven. And, with, and will give unto you the seed of all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my statutes and my laws. This was a time of famine. He could go to a better location where there was no famine. God says, stay here. That you run from challenges doesn't mean you'll be exempted. Now jump to verse 12 and 14. Isaac sowed in the land. Received in the same year a hundredfold, and God blessed him. 13, please. And the man waxed great and went forth and grew until he became very great, and the Philistines envied him, for he had possession of flocks, possession of herds, great stuff, servants, and the Philistines envied him. Now jump from that to verse 22. We'll read 22 to 29. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that he strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth. For he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Somebody shall be fruitful in this land. Yeah. And he went thence to Bathsheba. Keep reading. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father. Fear not. For I am with thee and will bless thee and will multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched the tent there. And their Isaac's servants digged a well. Keep reading. Then Abimelech went unto him from Gerar, and Ahuzas, one of his friends, and Pico, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore, come ye to me, seeing that ye hate me, and have sent me away from you. And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. 29. That thou will do unto us no hurt, as we have not touched thee. That's exemption. Somebody shout exemption. <laughs> and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now the blessed of the Lord. They couldn't touch him, not because they, they didn't try to. But God was the one who told him, stay there. Obedience. Those who obey God's instructions are not beneficiaries of the devil's destruction. Exemption is not for those who are strong, but for those who are weak enough to follow the master. Every believer must be two-sided. You must have your lion side and you must have your lamb side. Even Jesus is two. Boldness of the lion but reliance of the sheep. They told the story, one shepherd in Israel removed his cloth, his shepherd cloth, and gave it to somebody else and wasn't wearing anything. And this man that took the shepherd's cloth was trying to direct the sheep the sheep wouldn't follow. They went back to the man without the shepherd's clothes. Sheep, no matter how much they have a shepherd, they don't know how to do anything without the shepherd. That's what Jesus showed to me. I can of my own self do nothing. Yet God gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, how many knees? 
the sixth one is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That one brings a heavy mark of exemption. Psalm 105, verse 15. Thank you, Lord. Touch not my anointed. Not just the one with anointing oil. By now you know the difference. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So anything that renews the anointing of God upon a man's life, he must keep doing. One of it is thanksgiving. A praiser and a thanksgiver never lacks fresh oil. And once you have that, you can be rest assured that you cannot be touched. I have good news for you. From today, nothing evil touches you again. <laughs> Number seven, you need an open and unrepentant display for our affection for God. Listen. Don't love God alone in secret. Love God openly. If God will exempt you openly, then you must be public about your love for him. Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. He said, what can separate us, Romans 8, 28 to 38, from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, shall distress, shall famine. In other words, nothing can touch us that touches them. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loveth us, because we also love him back. Never be afraid to say you are a Christian. Hear this? Lose friends and gain God. None of those friends can take you anywhere. In fact, wherever they talk about God anyhow, don't go there. Including Babin Salon. It's better you don't look good than look good and destroy your sight. Number eight, have faith in God and his anointed. Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe also his prophets, so shall you prosper. Don't just believe God, believe his prophets, because his prophets are his men. Have faith in God and his anointed. Have faith in God and his anointed. Listen to this truth. Can you imagine any Israelite who didn't believe in Moses be exempted? There's no way. God spoke to Moses. God didn't speak to them. Moses said, God spoke to me. God said, Moses, you are my mouthpiece. Go to them. Anybody who doesn't believe you, let them die there. You can't be exempted in this day and time without having an anointed vessel who speaks over your life. I'm telling you the truth. When God may not recognize your voice, God knows their voice. Number nine. Is that nine? Number nine. Develop an exemption mindset. He said, as far as your eyes can see, I'll give it to you, Genesis 13, 14 to 15. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. He thinks he will die, he will die. He thinks he cannot die, he won't die. He thinks he cannot be sick, he won't be sick. The supernatural flows with your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you hear people say evil, change it because you have a different mindset. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number 10, this one I want to touch because it's very important. Develop, oh sorry, did I say number 10? Belong to a city of refuge. Listen, listen. 
When God sends you somewhere as a church to belong, that's your city. Listen, listen. It's not that there's anything wrong with anywhere, but you are not for there. My house is not your house. Your house is not my house. You know when you are home, everything will tell you this is home. You'll know when you are not home. Listen, from Joshua, I, I would have wished I had more time. Joshua 21 to 9. This one I wanted to settle down, but won't be able to. Just take it down. In Joshua 21 to 9, God told them, he said, now separate for the people of Israel cities of refuge. Listen, there's not just one city. There are cities. But not every city is a city of refuge. God will give somebody understanding. Amen. Listen, this is not the only city of refuge, but it's one of the cities. Also, not every city is a city of refuge. God will help you. Don't want to. Joshua 21 to 9. He said, in your city of refuge, the enemy cannot make a rubbish of you. Why? He said, once you get to the gate, once the slayer of blood is pursuing you, just run there. And he said, the elders at the gate, the slayer of blood can't enter. Why? You are in your city, your ordained city of refuge. And when I talk about city of refuge, I mean the church. There are several appointed cities of refuge, of, by, refuge by God on the earth. And the winner's family is privileged to be one of them. Amen. It's a city to belong. It's a city to identify with. It's a city not to be ashamed of. It's a city that God dwells in. Number 11. Are you blessed? Yes. Enter into a covenant to serve God. And I think somebody shared a testimony on that so they've preached that side of the message. 2 Chronicles 15, 3 to verse 15. Even from this young age, she has registered the child in sanctuary. That means forever you must be in sanctuary. You can't go to the devil's house. But hear this. For your service to bring about your exemption, it must be done acceptably. Hebrews 12, 28. Let us serve God acceptably. We must serve him acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 29, for God is a consuming fire. How do you serve God acceptably? Do it willingly. If there be first a willing mind, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12, do it joyfully. God loveth a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 7. Do it timely. Jeremiah 13, 16, he said, give glory to the Lord before he causes darkness. Do it with understanding. Isaiah 5.13, Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Do it faithfully, not faithfully. You know, some people, if resident pastor is not around, they are, they are strange people. That's faithful service. And you'll be doing it like your reward is with me. I can't reward you. I'm also looking to God for my own reward. If you like, pretend. Finally, number 12. Are you blessed? Yes. Never lose your confidence in God if you'll be exempted. If that mark will come upon you, never lose confidence in who? God. In God. Let us therefore not cast away our confidence when it is a great recompense of reward. Daniel 3, 14 to 25, the three Hebrew boys refused to bow. O king, we will not fear you for nothing. We, we serve our God. Our God whom we serve, he's able to deliver us. But even if he does not, we will not bow. They threw them in the fire. Now read that story well. They chained their hands, they chained their legs. Now if you use chain, that's metal. Look at metal and fire. Immediately they dropped them in, the chain broke. The ones who threw them in the fire came out. Hear this. The moment they enter the fire, the fire left the fire. You just need revelation for that. Fire, that's why it came out to consume the others. The king was watching like a movie. He said, hey, is it not three men we're casting? I see four men. The fourth man had already entered. They were walking around. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. 
in the midst of the fire, the fourth man appeared. Listen to this. The fourth man only appears to confident people. If you don't bow, you can't bow. Rise on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that mark of exemption is for this hour. I don't know what it is, and I don't know whoever may have marked anyone down for destruction. By this exemption mark coming upon you, you shall escape. Amen. Now, raise your voice. Everybody begin to pray. Lord, I receive right now, in this moment, that mark of exemption. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. Please raise your voice. Receive that mark of exemption. Receive it. Receive it consciously. Blessed be your name. Please hear this and hear this very well. In our generation, we are maybe even overfed with the truth. But not everybody follows it. It's not just, oh, I go to church, I'm a member, I have badge. They don't use badge to exempt you. They don't use ordination to exempt you. One thing I'm not sure I've taught since I came. It's not just you saying, no, I don't do evil. Hate it. No, 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 no. It's okay. In this generation, everybody can do what they want. Then you will be like them. He said, any time I read that Ezekiel 9, my heart, boom, begin at my sanctuary. Amen. Hate evil. What should you do about it? Hate you know why our spiritual fathers can't be touched? They don't mingle their hands in but. Most of us. Ah. You can't be calling on the God of your father, but you don't act like your father. The ones who had the mark were those who hated evil. Now, raise your hand very purposefully and very boldly, everybody here. I decree that everyone is exempted from premature death. Everyone here is exempted from sickness and disease. Everyone here is exempted from stagnation. Everyone here is exempted from frustration. Everyone here is exempted from poverty. Everyone here is exempted from oppression. In the name of Jesus. Regardless of the evils in the world. I decree that your case and my case shall be different. Your case and my case shall be different. Your case and my case shall be different. Case case shall be different. Welcome to your hot free zone of life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Amen.